France has always been at the forefront of technological innovation. The country gave us the photography, the hot air balloon, the first manned powered heavier than air flight, but not controlled and covering a distance of 50 meters, reaching an altitude of only 20 centimeters. They gave us the stethoscope, the V8 engine, the helicopter, the pencil sharpener, ramjet engine, baguette, Bugatti 100P, Caravelle, Citroën DS, Mirage 3, and the ATR. The ATR-42 made its maiden flight in 1984, and it is still in production. My love affair with the aircraft started in 1999. I am still learning, and today I will reveal one of its secrets. Stay tuned. Hello aviators, how are you today? My name is Magnus Nordahl, I'm an ATA captain and instructor. A week ago, I published a video about Emerald Airlines Flight 3671. You will find a link below and somewhere up here. During arrival to Belfast City Airport, two important electrical buses lost power. This resulted in the loss of many systems needed to fly the approach and to land. Thanks to the sound understanding of the aircraft, the crew managed to solve the problem and landed safely. When I was working on that video, I came across the standby buses and battery power only lost equipment lists. The more I looked at it, the more confusing it was. Until I got one of those Eureka moments. To understand the logic of the lists, we must recap the basics of the electric system. The main electric system consists of 28 volt DC power. The DC system is powered by two generators and two 24 volts batteries. There are two AC systems. The first with 26 volt and 115 volt constant frequency supplied by two inverters. The second AC system is powered by two variable frequency generators and is called AC wild. Each system has several bus bars, which in turn supply the aircraft systems. The batteries can be used to start the engines, and they provide emergency power in case both generators should fail. The batteries powers only the most important buses, the essential bus, emergency, and both standby buses. In addition, there are two battery hot bus bars. Here is a clip from the previous video explaining some systems that are powered by the these essential, emergency, and standby buses. These essential bus, air condition pack one and two, so now we have to descend. Audio system, all calls PA, they are lost. This emergency bus, autopilot, VHF1, transponder 1, normal trims, but we have the standby pitch trim. This is standby bus, autopilot, flaps control, landing gear control, we are ILS1, GPS1, MCDU1. When it comes to ATA variants with EFIS cockpit, we have a nice rule of thumb to identify the failed buses. DC bus 1, you have lost engine 1 oil and fuel indication. DC bus 2, you have lost engine 2 oil and fuel indication. DC essential bus, you have lost NP, ITT and NHNL indication. And DC emergency bus, you have lost torque indication. In addition, the batteries power the AC standby bus, which powers the flaps indicator and the trim indicators, plus a few other systems. Finally, the batteries are hot wired to the respective hot battery buses, which are used to power some very important systems and indications. There are many variants of the ATR, and electrical distribution to the systems may differ between the variants. Therefore, check the manuals for the aircraft you are flying. What I am showing here is for an ATR-42 and 72600 passenger versions. The loss of both DC generators will result in the loss of several DC buses and the main AC buses. The AC wide system is not affected as it has separate generators. Since the 1990s, ATR aircraft have been equipped with a transformer rectifying unit, TRU. It is powered by the AC wild bus number 2 and provides enough DC power to supply the buses that otherwise will have been powered by the batteries. 
This concerns the batteries and allows for the aircraft to be certified for ETOPS, Extended Twin Operations, or EDTO, Extended Diversion Time Operations, as it is called today. If you want more information about the electrical system, you can check out this video, link below and here. Now, let us have a look at the standby buses and battery power only lost equipment lists. There are two checklists referring to the standby buses and battery only lost equipment lists. DC generator 1 and 2 fault and DC standby bus failure. The first checklist is of interest for us today. When both generators are offline, the main battery will power the essential bus and both standby buses. An emergency battery will power the emergency bus. If the generators cannot be reset, we activate the TRU. If the TRU doesn't work, or if the aircraft does not have a TRU, the maximum flight time in IMC is limited to 30 minutes. This is the time it takes for the main battery to drain out. We also set the battery switch to override. This is a precaution in case the standby buses did not switch from the emergency battery to the main battery as they should. When the voltage to the DC standby bus is below 19.5 volts, we get an under voltage alert. This means the main battery is almost empty, and we will soon lose DC essential bus and both standby buses. Then we are left with the emergency battery powering the emergency bus and the hot emergency battery bus. Here is one important thing to remember. When those buses lose power, many indications and alerts will also disappear. Therefore, it is important to follow the checklists carefully. But until further, we assume the main battery is not empty yet. Further down the checklist is a reference to the standby buses and battery power only lost equipment lists. With the main battery alive, we use the column for battery only, basic. The systems lost are those powered by the main DC buses, the main AC buses, the DC service and utility buses. When the main battery is empty and we have standby bus under voltage, it is getting a bit complicated. Now you must read the column for standby bus plus the column for standby bus under voltage. The latter column only shows the system lost from the DC essential bus. Don't ask me why. In fact, this list was much better before. This is the same list published for the 500 variants in 2008. Here we have four columns all the way, and the columns of standby bus under voltage includes the systems lost when the standby buses are lost. Then you only need to read one column at a time. But today we have this situation, so let us make the best out of it. Instead of thinking about what you have lost, and that is almost everything. It is more interesting to focus on what you have left. And that is, simply said, just enough to let you fly the aircraft and talk with air traffic control, who can see you on the radar. But you cannot fly an instrument approach and land. To do that, you need to read the checklist for standby bus under voltage. If DC generator 1 plus 2 and TRU not available, for approach only, DC standby bus, select override. This transfers the standby buses to the emergency battery. And voila, you have VOR, ILS number one, and flaps and landing gear control. But you better make sure you fly the approach well, because with the extra electric load, the emergency battery will only last for another 10 minutes. If in the lost equipment list, you can now read a column for standby bus override, if at time. You fly the aircraft first and land. So there you have it, a complex list requiring a little extra brain power. What do you think? Should ATI revert to the original layout or is this list okay as it is? Let me know in the comment section below. I am looking forward to read your comments. And that is all for this time. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy landing. One hundred fifty.
40, 30, 20, 10, 